Okay. Here we go. Committee on parole is called back to order. The time is 10.56. Our next is going to be Mr. Freddie Taylor, Jr. Uh, Mr. Taylor, would you give us your uh, DOC, your full name and DOC number, please? Freddie Taylor, uh, 10971. Mr. Taylor, uh, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record, and then the board will conduct a parole interview with you at the appropriate time. We will allow the participants who have indicated they wish to speak to have their input. Uh, we have one person uh, who wishes to speak uh, in opposition. And uh, at the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand our process, sir? Yes, sir. This is the matter of Freddie L. Taylor, Jr., DOC number 100971. Uh, he is... Uh, Date of birth is December the 19th of 1958. He's a fourth felony offender. Uh, he has an adjusted uh, good time date of October the 13th of 2028. He has a full term date of March 25th, 2038. He has a total sentence of 35 years for possession of a firearm by convicted felon and attempted manslaughter. Is that uh, fairly accurate, Mr. Taylor? Yes, sir. Taylor, your case was assigned to me, so uh, I will begin uh, our questioning, okay? Mr. Taylor, how old are you, sir? 63. How long have you been in prison on these charges? About 20 years. Tell me a little bit about your educational background. How far did you go in school? I went for 11th grade. Did you ever get your GED? No, sir. Did you ever try to get your GED? Yes, sir. Did you have issues or difficulty getting your GED? I just, just, just got disinterested. Okay. And, and why did you get disinterested in it? Went to work. Went to work at offshore. Have you tried to, to, to work on your GED since you've been in prison? No, sir. Can you take any sort of medication right now? Yes, sir. What, what do you take? Oh, uh, I forget the name of it. You know what it's for? Yes. Sir. What What's it for? Paranoid, schizophrenic. And how often do you take your medication? Every day. And uh, when was the last time uh, you had, uh, you've seen the, the, the psychologist or, or, or doctor or, or medical person that assists you in your medication? How often do you see that person? So about three weeks ago. Okay. And, uh, You've been on this medication, the same medication, how long now? About uh, 10 months. And have you noticed any change? Has it helped you at all? Yes. Tell me how it's helped you. Stop me from talking to myself. Tell me, tell me what what you're in prison for. Tell what charges brought you here back in 2003. Yes. Uh, tell me what happened. Tell me as best remember what happened. Broken love affair. That's all. That's all the now way I, I can explain I it to you. I understand maybe the purpose of what you did, but what did you do? What did I do? Oh, it's a attempted manslaughter, a convicted felony with a firearm. I understand uh, what the law is and what the statute says. I want you to tell me specifically what you did to Ms. Coleman. Oh, all right. All right. I went, uh, me and Ms. Coleman had a, a, a affair, and uh, I went to Burger King, and uh, The incident went down from right there. Well, I need to know what the incident was about. What did you do? 
Well, the incident was about uh, me and her was in a love affair, and uh, she did some things that I didn't agree with, and and it Mr. went from Taylor, that. Did you have a gun? Did you pull a gun on her and threaten to kill her? Yes, sir. Okay, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at because you denied having a gun a while back. You now agree that you went over there with a gun to threaten her, maybe to try to get her back to you or whatever you were trying to do, but that's what you did. Yes, sir. What do you think, how do you think she felt about all of that? At that time, it didn't make, it, 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 it didn't even matter. I was just, I, I was on, out there. Okay, well, I understand that. How do you think today, looking back in 2003, you going into that Burger King with a gun and threatening her, I think you said something like, uh, uh, you take one for the job, I'll shoot your ass. What do you think she felt like today, as you sit here today, what do you think, how do you think that affected her back then? Mr. Tony, that statement right there wasn't made. Uh, All I right. said you, took, you pulled uh, a gun on the lady in the Burger King. Yes, sir. But I, I'm, how, do I'm you, how do you think she felt? What have you learned about what you did to that lady back then? Uh, I learned a lot. Well, tell me about it. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, uh, I would never go back and do it. Again, because the simple fact is, I done learned better uh, because at that time I was on them drugs and uh, both of us was, uh, we was, I I can't explain it. I, I can't explain it, man. I, well, let's I, talk a little bit about drugs. What kind of drugs were you using back in 2003? It was just pills, black mollies. Yellow mollies, you understand a lot of speed. Yeah. How often were you using them? It was every, it was an everyday thing. And how long had you been using them? About four or five years. Now you've got a very poor history of supervision. You've been on supervision how many times? Three times? At least three times? You've been revoked almost every time, is that right? Yes, sir. Why is that? Is it drugs or or why why do you keep getting out and getting revoked and getting put on supervision, probation, parole, and you get come back to prison? Why? Uh, uh I was up under this uh from 1983, and every time you know you cut. Or uh, charge like a, a misdemeanor for like disturbing the peace or or, or stuff like this. This is the way they 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 was violating you back then. Yeah, it, I I wasn't up under these new laws. I was up under these old laws. Anything that you did, I had a, a simple fight and disturbing the peace, and I came back after a, 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 after that. And that didn't even make no sense. I'm paying forty three dollars a month. Let me let me ask you this: uh, How is your disciplinary record while you've been in prison? It's it's it's, uh, it's all right. You've been written up ninety nine times. You've had nine write ups in the last three years. Why and what are those about? Fight. Why, why do you get in fights? That was the environment that I was in. You got to realize I'm in the, I'm in the penitentiary. This ain't no uh, this ain't this ain't no place where you just lay there and just call your own shots. This this a place I was in Angola State Penitentiary. I woke up one morning, dude. Uh, he's so full of drugs. You understand? He tried to stay up beat with some scissors. You understand it, so I had to protect myself from right there. It's a lot of things that don't even be reported to security. How long have you been at David Wade? Uh, about a year and some.
What what can you tell us about uh, Mr. Taylor? Well, Freddie Denny, like I said, came in April of 21, I believe, Mr. Maribel, and he, uh, he he had some pretty significant write-ups that he had gotten at LSP, and they they transferred him to Wade. Uh, he's done fairly well here. He's had one write-up at this institution. Uh, for rule five, aggravated disobedience, it wasn't that serious of an incident. Nothing, nothing like the write ups he had in the past. He's uh, he's doing pretty well here. He's uh, currently housed in CCR, which is closed custody. Uh, he's maintained a good conduct record. He's been very cooperative with the mental health treatment staff here. He got on the medication he referred to. Uh, in, in his previous statement, he, he started seeing Dr. Seal uh, not long after he got here and he got on this, he got on the medication he's taking and it seems to uh, work very well for him. He takes the medication I just described. Uh, and, and at this point in his incarceration, he's a, a, a likable fellow that's easy to talk to. He's just a old country boy from Winfield that, that uh, you know, just had had a lot of bad scrapes with the law over the years, but right now he seems to be doing fairly well. He's in a pretty good place, and he seems to be uh, interested in taking his medication and interested in doing better. And I think he likes the environment he's in now better than he did prior to getting here. And that's I think it's been a positive adjustment for him. And uh, he gets out in 2028, which is uh, just a few years down the road. I think that's his. Uh, uh, Release date is 2028. But he's made a lot of improvements. He's made a lot of improvements over the last uh, four, 14 months or so that he's been at this institution. He's, a, he's not his and his record indicates that he's put he's putting his best foot forward here and he's making a concerted effort. And I think as long as he maintains his treatment regimen, takes the medication, uh, talks to the uh, treatment staff in the manner that he's doing now, I think he'll continue to do well, uh, Mr. Maribel. Thank you, Warden. I appreciate your comments. Mr. Taylor, how, how do you plan on staying sober, staying away from pills and all of the things that you used when you were out before? If you get out soon, how will you be able to stay away from all of those? That's the thing of the past right there, uh, Mr. Tony. Uh, I, can't, I can't say what the future holds, but I, I know one thing. I ain't interested in no drugs or alcohol, nothing. Uh, I was planning on once I get back out there on the street, I was thinking about relocating to Waco or uh, Texas and uh, start staying with my uh, cousin out in Waco, Texas. Uh, he uh, retired out the military and uh, that's what I was uh, planning on uh, starting over, just trying to start somewhere fresh, trying to do something uh, different in life. I, you know, I'm over age now. I'm 63 years old, man. I ain't, I ain't got time for the uh, juvenile stuff no more. Who would you stay with in Waco, Texas? Oh, uh, my cousin named Robert Morgan Jr. If uh, you talk, you talk to him, he's willing to let you stay there with him. Oh yeah. If uh, I'm I'm going back to Winfield first though, and uh, and talk to my probation officer. And, and then have all that right there taken care of first. Thank Before you. I try to uh, just, just jump up and move to Waco, Texas. Okay, now we'll hear from uh, Ms. Coleman. Ms. Coleman? Hello. How are you, Ms. Coleman? If you would uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like us to know. I'm fine. My name is Yamiki Coleman, and I still feel like he's still a threat because he's still sending a message towards me that he's still going to finish the job. And I have two kids right now, and I'm terrified of my, my, myself and my children's sake. He's still when, a threat to me. When you say he's sending messages towards you, what, what do you mean by like sending out the prison to, towards his friends and they telling me what he sent in prison, whoever he called him. Has that been recently? About two months ago. And he's he still, and I'm still afraid of him. 
this not the this ain't the only time that he says he's not gonna do it or whatever. It's been going on for years. He'll get in and get out and still do the same thing. And right now, I, I, I have children. I'm I'm I'm, I'm older now. And he's a threat. And he, they laughing at that. Now, ma'am, I want you to be able to finish whatever it is you want us to say. They laughing that he's doing this. That's still like a threat. He 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 still is a threat towards me. I'm still afraid of him. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. We appreciate your comments. All right, hey, Mr. Tony. The reason that uh, Mr. I Taylor, found just a, Mr. Taylor, just a second. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to the board. Okay. Thank, thank you, Ms. Coleman. All right, Mr. Taylor, I'll give you an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to the board before we vote. What would you like to tell us? Oh, uh, she said that uh, I made some uh, aggressive uh, statements towards her. Everybody that I communicate with, I could give you uh, the address and uh, and the ones that I've been talking to on the phone. Uh, I, 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 I do not want to have nothing else to do with no Mr. U. Miko. I do not know what type of relationship that she have out there. If she got two kids, that's on her. All I'm saying is this right here, Mr. Tony. If she got a husband out there, let him be a man and step up to the plate. I'm not causing her no type of harm. 20 years, I done been locked up. I ain't been nowhere or 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 writing her or, or, or contacting her in no type of form or fashion. This is what I can't understand. And when, when they asked me about this the other day, uh, about a few weeks ago, I, I was totally lost with that. I'm totally lost right now with it. I, you could put me out on the street. I'm not gonna do her nothing. And that's my, my word is law in here and out on the street. She already know what type, see, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't speak for the past. Only thing I could do is say what happened. It was a broken love affair and that was it. You understand? And, I, and that's all, uh, when all my life I've been in and out the institution. When I came out the institution, I met Yumika Cole, okay? Mr. Tony, when I met her, I fell in love with her, all right? I did my best. I put my best foot forward. She didn't appreciate what I did, and that was that. So that led me to what I did, and that's, that's the only thing I can say. And my record speak for itself. My work record, I, I worked in Fusha when I came home, to do this crime right there. I came from Fusha and lose out. Now, she gonna lay there and tell you anything, you understand? If we gonna be correct and be out us about this right here and, 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 and all this old juvenile stuff, I'm 63 years old. I'm, I'm on my last leg. I'm on, on my last leg. So what do it look like me going back out there trying to lay there and prove a point and, and kill her or, or cause some type of conflict with somebody else out there. I'm not trying to do that and, and come here and spend the rest of my life up in this pen. I, I, I know what it's like up in here. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. We appreciate your comments. Yes. Mr. Taylor, uh, I, I really think you've come a long way. I think you, you yeah, I'll, 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 you know, just like I said, Taylor, Taylor, mm -hmm. if you're done speaking, okay? Now we're voting, but you need to listen to us. Mr. Taylor, uh, I think you've come a long way. Thank you. Since you've been at David Wade, you've been a changed person. You, your, your record's good, but before you came here, you had lost, uh, 300, I mean, uh, 175 days, a good time. Uh, 
you're taking your medication, uh, you're seeing regularly the doctor, you're doing well. Uh, I just don't think you're quite ready for me to vote to release you right now. My vote today is going to be to deny you, but to continue to do what you're doing and, and keep working a little harder and reapply when you can. Maybe it'll be a different story then. But for today's hearing, I want to congratulate you on what you've accomplished so far while you've been there. And I hope you continue to do that. So good luck to you, sir. Right. Yeah. Um, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor. Um, I want to appreciate Ms. Coleman for coming today and, and, and sharing. Uh, I don't know if you've had victim awareness, but I want you to take it. I, I do want you to take victim awareness for me, for me. I would like to see you a longer time with no write-ups. That would tell me that you're ready to be out there and cooperate. Uh, 2021 was your last write-up. Uh, that's concerning for me. Poor supervision history, that's concerning for me. So my vote is to deny as well. But I want to encourage you to follow up on that plan with your cousin. Ask him to send a letter in or something saying that you can go live with him in Texas. Let's try to plan to go from Louisiana straight to Texas, not back to Winfield and be in Texas. Get with your cousin. Uh, they got classification staff there. They are here. You go ahead and get that compact already with. Uh, I would like you to have a more solid transition plan the next time. And reapply. Stay right up for me and reapply for another year. Best wishes to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Uh, I concur with my colleague. I also vote to deny. Mr. Taylor, you've got three votes to deny. You've got a little more work to do. So continue to work as hard as you can work. Good luck to you, sir. Yeah. Warden, thank you very much for your help. Uh, we'll be adjourned, uh, David Wade. Yes, sir. Y'all have a uh, blessed day and a Merry Christmas if I don't see y'all before Christmas. Good seeing y'all today. Yes, sir. Thank you, Warden. Take care. So interesting, right? I mean, to unpack this, I think the first question that a lot of us are going to want to know is, did he actually threaten her or is she making it up? And the bottom line is we don't know. I think what we can lean towards is that the board is they're not basing their decision on it. They were going to they were going to have him do more time, but they weren't using it against him. Like I think it was really not a relevant point because you just don't know the truth here. On one hand, it is very very possible that someone who's suffering with um, paranoid schizophrenic schizophrenia could go ahead and have a friend make some type of threat uh, on his behalf. And he might not even be aware of it or, uh, you know, I don't understand these things, but that's like, that's not a stretch to believe that that could happen. It's also not a stretch to believe that she, the victim would make it up, not because she's a bad person, but because she could still be genuinely in fear of him. I try not to read too much into it. I, she, 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 you know, at once at one side, it looked like she's a defined person. You know, he pulled a gun on her 20 years ago and that can change someone's life. And who knows what happened really in the, in the past 20 years. So she can be a defiant I'm not going to be the victim. I'm not going to be afraid of you. I'm going to make sure you stay locked up. I'm going to protect my kids and my family and myself. Like that's one approach. And then the other approach is that she still um, has some type of attachment to him and it's some strange, you know, and for, it's just not fair for me to try to come up with the assumption there. Just wouldn't be fair. Uh, what do I believe? You know, again, like what I said before, it's possible that he, 
you know, as someone who's dealing with paranoid schizophrenia, he's kind of newly on the medication. I just don't know. I don't really, I love to hear your thoughts on it, on what you think the situation is. I'm not sure that the board bought into it though. Now he's, he's been in and out of prison his whole life. Uh, he's locked up 20 years ago for this. He's 63 now. It seems that he really was suffering from a mental, mental illness that was completely ignored. And now he's on medication and he's older. He's in a safer facility, I believe. And he seems to be doing well. And 99 write-ups in 20 years, it's a lot. For those of you who are new to the channel, you might think, like, you know, to his point, you got to fight. you got to defend yourself. Um, and I don't really know, but there are just some inmates that don't get write-ups. They get one, uh, six, 12, 99 is... Uh, it's on the higher, I'm not sure, I, I don't off the top of my head know of anyone who's gotten more, but he has gotten fewer now, maybe it's because of his medication, which is just interesting, right? I mean, it, it was funny, his response, I talked to myself less. Uh, <laughs> you know, this whole time he had this undiagnosed serious disease and um, he's finally getting treatment at 63 years old. He, he, he couldn't help himself. He, he, he's laughing. The victim's talking and he's laughing and he's making faces. And it's just like the complete lack of awareness and immaturity. And he needs to stay locked up. That's, in my opinion, without a doubt. And maybe it's just more time, more time in the medication, more time to kind of mellow out. Man, you show up to, what was it, a Burger King with a gun and threatened someone's life? And it was uh, an affair, so was she married at the time? Is that what he means by the word affair, or is it just means that he was, you know, hooking up? Uh, I'm not, it's not clear to me either. And... It's just mental illness. I think that that's what it comes down to. And plus... All of that, I don't know. I've not heard of black, black Molly. I don't think it means MDMA. So is that something else? Uh, I've never heard of it. If you know what it is, please put it in the comment section. But anyways, doing whatever it was for years, it's going to make you do something like pull out a gun in a Burger King. But again, that's my thoughts. Love to hear yours in the comment section. I'll speak to you later.